Hello, I'm TM Grunty and in today's video I want to tell you something about general aircraft carrier gameplay and strategies. The replay you're watching in the background is for your entertainment and I won't comment on anything specific but you might notice that several things which I'm talking about in the video are actually happening in the match. I've split the video into five parts. First I'll give you advice about what plane types you should use to start the match. Then we will be talking about the second attack run and aircraft carrier positioning on the map. After that we focus on how to play the mid game and how we can help our team to win the battle. And finally we will be talking about what to do when we have won or lost our flank. So let's talk about the start of the battle. What plane type should we use first? Well it depends and to make a decision we first need to think about what our goals with the first squadron are. We want to spot most of the enemy team and find out where each ship is going. We also want to provide some fighter cover in a cap circle to protect our destroyer who is hopefully heading there. And ideally we want to find an enemy destroyer and already do an attack run on it. Now that we have established our goals we need to have a look at the matchmaking. How many ships of each class are in the game? How much anti-air does the enemy team have? And last but not least are we bottom or top tier? Considering all this, what planes should we use? IGN and USN Tech 3 CVs will almost always want to start the match with rocket planes. They are fast and get to the enemy team quickly and they are decent against enemy destroyers if we happen to find one right away. Royal Navy rocket planes are rather slow, but they are so good against destroyers that we still want to use them first because the upside is so big. On German Tech 3 CVs however, the attack aircraft are very squishy and the rockets itself do very little against destroyers. We also need them later in the game to drop into broadside cruisers. The risk of losing them early on is just too high. Therefore we want to start the game with our least valuable planes, which are the torpedo bombers which coincidentally are also quite effective against destroyers. A bit of a special case is the Graf Zeppelin. The attack aircraft there are very slow, but also very good against destroyers. If we are top tier and there are enough destroyers in the game making it likely we will find one quickly, we should start with those. But if we are up tiered, we want to start the match with the dive bombers. They are our weakest planes and losing the, some of them in the initial spotting won't hurt our gameplay much. And they are very fast, so we will gather a lot of information very quickly. As a general rule, we never want to start the match with our strongest planes. The enemy team is still more or less grouped together in spawn and the overlapping AA can be very brutal if we happen to find the wrong ships first. We simply can't afford to lose our best planes just for spotting duty in the beginning of the match. For our second attack run we basically have three options. Option number one, we have found a destroyer and already heard him quite a bit in the initial run. In that case there is nothing wrong with using the rocket planes again and striking that destroyer trying to sink it right away. Option number two is going with our best planes next. This is the best choice if we don't have to go for a destroyer but instead found a nice isolated target to attack. Now the best plane type varies from nation to nation and the commander build you're using. It could be a Kuryu Midway or MBR using the dive bombers into an isolated bow on cruiser or battleship. It could be an audacious Graf Zeppelin or Hakiryu using the torpedo bombers to attack an isolated battleship. It depends on the situation we encountered with our initial spotting and the aircraft carrier we are playing. Option number 3 comes into play when we use a legendary commander with special talent skills like Cunningham on the Audacious or Lutyens on the Graf Zeppelin. In that case we want to proc their special talents quickly to profit from them for as long as possible. So in the Graf Zeppelin or MBR we might want to use the attack aircraft next and try to land as many rockets as possible into a cruiser or a battleship. In the Audacious we want to use the torpedo bombers trying to get two floodings when aiming for the bow or stern of an enemy battleship or a stationary cruiser. And that's also exactly what I tried to do in the match you are watching in the background. While our planes are carrying out the second attack we also need to think about moving our aircraft carrier itself. A CV spends most of the time in battle flying the planes to the target. So if we manage to reduce the amount of time we will be able to carry out more attacks and have a higher influence in the battle. The main goal is to get the CV in a position that is somewhat close to the front line but still safe enough to not get shot at. 
There are multiple ways of approaching that and each has the respective up and down sides. There is nothing wrong with just sitting in the middle of the map in the starting position for a while. This is especially true if we haven't figured out yet which of the flanks is going to be the strong side and we don't want to commit to the wrong one. It also allows us to work both flanks, although I do not recommend doing that. Once we've figured out which of the flanks is winning, we should move our carrier over to that side. The downside of staying where we are is that we are vulnerable to being spotted by the enemy CV or even DDs. And the enemy battleships can take long range shots at us. Also, if we are up against an enemy MVR or FDR, we can't stay and have to start moving immediately when the battle starts. Both of those carriers are very capable of CV sniping and striking a stationary target is much easier than hitting a moving one. Many maps have a so-called safe spot somewhere on the map and going there is the second option we have. The safe spot is usually an island somewhat close to a front line and big enough to fully hide the carrier behind it so it either can't be spotted at all or the enemy team isn't able to shoot over it. In the match you are watching this would be the islands in I3 or C4 and that's exactly where I'm moving to. It is almost without risk and we don't have to worry about our CV for quite a while as long as the flank doesn't collapse completely. The downside of going there is that those islands aren't exactly the closest either, so the flight times aren't as short as they could possibly be, which limits our damage output a little bit. There is also no guarantee that this will be the winning flank and we might eventually have to start moving again. If we choose to go there, we also have to make sure to set the autopilot not too close to the island, so we don't accidentally steer into it and get stuck. This is also a general rule when using the autopilot. Don't get too close to islands and make sure every turn we set can actually be made without grounding. We also need to make sure that after we reach the position, we are indeed fully covered and no part of the hull is sticking out from behind. And last but not least, we can just move our carrier over to the strong flank in open waters and try to be as close as possible to the front line. The upside of this is clear. We can get in the most runs and do the most damage. However, the downside is also quite massive. Balancing the distance is something you have to master over time, because if you get too close you most likely end up dead more often than not. We also get heavily punished if we misjudge the situation and choose the wrong side. Being that close leaves us not much room trying to turn and run if the flank collapses. And even if we do, aircraft carriers aren't the fastest ships and we can get run down rather easily. If you want to try this, be prepared for a long learning process and you should approach it from the safe side. It is much better to be too far away than being too close. Whichever option you choose, we should always re-evaluate our position on the map and the state of the battle from time to time to see if we can improve our position. A final note on that topic, do not reverse your CV to the border or even worse to the corner of the map. You will be too far away from the battle and the planes take too long to get to the action. However, on some maps carriers can get really bad starting positions with an island directly in front or right next to the ship. This would lead us to beaching if we tried to move forward or would get us too close to the enemy team when trying to pass the island. In those scenarios we obviously reverse immediately when the battle starts, but don't forget to cancel that movement once it's possible to do the intended turn safely. Now that we have carried out our second attack and moved our carrier into a better position, it's time to help our team to win the game. How do we do that? Well, please keep in mind that this video is meant to be a generic gameplay and strategy guideline. What exactly we have to do depends on many factors in each individual game, such as team lineups and positioning, that it is impossible to give a game plan that will work every time. What I like to do is help one flank to win quickly. This is either the side to which I moved my carrier, or if I sit in the middle, the side which I think is stronger. After we figured out what side we are playing for, we do everything we can to sink the enemy ships on that side as quickly as possible. We try to find the destroyers and keep them spotted for our team to kill them, or do it ourselves with the rocket planes. We protect our own team and especially our destroyers with fighters if the enemy CV is also playing for that flank. We also need to make sure that we rotate between plane types. This is very important because of how the plane regeneration works. 
There is a limited number of space for each plane type on deck, and as long as we don't use that type, the regeneration for those planes won't start. In general, it is best to focus down one ship at a time to take its guns out of the battle. Remember, a ship at 10% is putting out as much, if not more damage than a ship with full HP. We are also the class that is best suited for taking out any low HP ships who try to run away, so we should make sure to think those ships before they can heal or go undetected. If we are playing a carrier that relies a bit more on fires and flooding, such as the Royal Navy ones, it is okay to rotate drops between two targets and try to create a permanent fire or flood. But make sure to help your team by calling out the usage of damage control party consumables when you see them being used. We also need to make sure to not forget the middle of the map, especially if we are playing on a 3 cap domination map or for example two brothers. It is important to not let an enemy destroyer break through there and potentially top our team from the side or behind. And last but not least we have to take care about our planes during that phase of the game. This is still early to mid game and we can't afford to lose a lot of planes that early. When the enemy team groups together too close and we have no good targets anymore, we have to reconsider our game plan. If we absolutely have to still play for this flank, we can try to use empty drops to preserve some planes while still trying to get one strike through at a time. But this is still costly for our planes and should only be done if we are absolutely sure that we must win this flank at all cost in order to win the game. The alternative is to abandon that flank and play for the other side instead. Of course that implies that we actually have better targets to attack there and we will have to move our carrier. Speaking of the other flank, the players there are constantly complaining about having no support and are calling me out. What shall I do? For the most part we ignore that. We simply can't be everywhere on the map at the same time. And as I explained earlier, time is one of the most precious resources a CB has. It just takes way too much time flying over to the other flank. We also have limited vision range, so we don't see the current game state on the other flank. We can only see the positioning on the minimap, but not the health bars. This means we don't actually know if that side really needs help at all. But even if they do, there isn't much we can do. The fighters we can deploy are more of a nuisance to the enemy CV than actual help. They can't prevent a strike from happening because of how the mechanic works. They just don't shoot down enough planes and more often than not also engage too late. We also don't know if we have a good target to strike on the weak flank until we actually fly there and get the ship surrendered. In general, flying over there is a huge investment with no guarantee that we'll be able to achieve anything and therefore it's just not worth it. The best thing we can do to help the other flank is win our own flank as soon as possible. This allows every ship on our flank to move over and help the other side by creating crossfires. Now let's assume we have won our flank. What's next? Again, it depends on the current situation in the battle. If the game is clearly won, it's perfectly okay to start farming some damage and try to play for our own score. This is also when we can be more loose with our plane management as we can afford to lose some planes in order to deal damage. However, we always have to pay attention to the game state and don't try to win harder and throw the match away. If the battle is still close after we cleared our flank, we have to keep playing for points. This means we have to finish low HP ships on the enemy team, try to find and potentially stink destroyers and help our team contest the caps and hopefully come out victorious. But what do we do when our flank is losing? The most important thing is to realize this early and get our carrier out in time and not die. We should still try to get guns out of the game and finish any low HP ships if that is possible without losing too many planes. This will slow down the enemy team a bit and maybe even stop their push completely. It also gives our ships a better chance of getting away. If there aren't any good targets for us anymore, we have to focus on the other flank and hopefully help our team win that side instead. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. Keep in mind that no matter how well you play, this is still a team game and even the best players can't win every match. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new that can help you in your own aircraft carrier games. If you have any questions, please comment below or even better visit me during my livestreams on twitch.tv slash tmgrunty 
and I answer you there to the best of my knowledge. Thank you for watching and have a great day.